You're listening to Romancing in Paris on Paris Underground Radio. Hello, and welcome to the Romancing in Paris podcast. I'm your host, Lily Heisey. In this podcast, we'll be traveling around the city as I pick out my top romantic spots per arrondissement. You don't have to visit these places only as a couple. Exploring them can be the expression of your own love of Paris. Are you ready to get romancing in Paris? Today, we're traveling from the 3rd District to the 4th. The 4th District is a rather curious one, as it occupies not only the southern part of the Marais, but also the entirety of Ile Saint-Louis and around 60% of Ile de la Cité. This is one case where the divisions of arrondissements in 1860 is somewhat questionable, but this odd division acts in the favour of the 4th district, as it grants it some of the most beautiful and expansive stretches along the Seine River. In episode 23 of the podcast, we toured the most romantic bridges in Paris, two of which are actually in the 4th district. In this episode, we're going to visit a place... A special place, or rather, a place, a tiny place, which is in between two of those most romantic bridges, the Pont Louis-Philippe and the Pont Saint-Louis. Are you ready? Grab your sherry and your picnic basket, bottle of wine, or ice cream cone. We're going to the Place Louis-Aragon. The Place where? Although you've likely never heard of La Place Louis Aragon, you've probably seen it, in person or in photographs, and didn't realize that the Itsy Bitsy Place even had a name. This was the case with me until I was contemplating which site to cover in this new episode, returning to the fourth arrondissement. In fact, the location of our little square was only given a name ten years ago. The Placette is found along the Quai de Bourbon and the Seine at the northwesternmost tip of Ile Saint-Louis. As I did in episode 5 of the podcast, on the Quai de la Tournelle, I'm going to cheat a little by considering both the street level and the riverside as one entity for this episode. Actually, it was the riverside part of this square which I originally discovered and fell in love with. The point of the island, down by the water's edge, used to be one of my favourite places to picnic, before the Quai de la Tournelle won me over. I'd most certainly had many picnics at this magical spot, before it was called Place Louis-Aragon. But before we get around to its name and the wonderful love story I uncovered linked to its namesake, let's discuss the location's history a little. The Ile Saint-Louis is considered one of the chicest addresses in Paris, but... It wasn't always. Originally an uninhabited island called Ile Notre Dame, when the Charles V wall was built in the mid 1300s, the island was split in two by a canal. The newly created easternmost island was called Ile aux Vaches, or the Isle of the Cows. And yes, its name indeed came from the fact that it was used for grazing cattle. It's hard to believe that such a posh place today was formerly a cow pasture. Under the rule of Henry IV at the turn of the 17th century, it was decided that the island would be urbanized. This only happened after Henry's untimely death in 1610. 
As of 1614, the canal was filled in, and a narrow street was driven down the centre of the unified island, along with several cross streets. This was one of the earliest examples of urban planning in Paris. Created under the helm of developer Christophe Marie, the namesake of Le Pont Marie, a then new bridge built to connect the island to the right bank, and previously called Le Pont Louis the Thirteenth, the king at the time of its construction. It's now Paris's second oldest bridge after Le Pont Neuf, although parts of it had to be rebuilt due to destruction caused by floods. In a mere 50 years, the island streets were completely lined by elegant townhouses. Many of these still exist today, while others were replaced by Hausminian apartment buildings in the mid-19th century. It's these historic residences, many of which have soaring views over the city and the island's uber-central location, which make it so prized. Non-residents can stop to enjoy the views from the terraces of the cafes at the beginning of the main street, these being the Brasserie de Ile Saint-Louis and Le Fleur en Ile, both of which boast stunning views of Paris and have featured in countless movies and TV shows, most recently in Emily in Paris. However, just around the corner, in the shadow of these crowded terraces, is this serene square. In 2012, the tiny tip of the island was baptized as Place Louis Aragon. Most French people will know who Louis Aragon was but few foreigners have likely heard of this important 20th century poet, novelist, resistance fighter, and ardent lover. Let's learn a little bit more about passionate Louis. Louis himself was born out of passion, an affair between Louis and Dreux, a former prefect of the police of the city of Paris and member of the French parliament, and Marguerite Touquet Massillon, 33 years his junior. After Louis's secret birth in 1897 to protect the honour of his unwed parents, he was passed off as the adopted son of his maternal grandmother. The fact of never being recognised by his father scarred Louis for life and was woven into some of his poems. Louis initially entered medical school, which is where he fatefully met future fellow writer, poet, and dadaist André Breton. But before their paths veered towards creativity, Louis was conscripted in 1917 and sent to the French front the following spring as an auxiliary doctor in World War I. It was around this time that his mother revealed the truth about his conception. After the war, Louis turned his attention to writing and published his first work, Feu de Joie, in 1920. Over the course of the next decade, he was involved, along with his friend André Breton, in the Dadaist and Surrealist movements. To pay the bills, he also wrote novels. Within this creative climate, Louis became the lover of English anarchist writer and poet Nancy Cunard, whom he followed around Europe. Their relationship came to a dramatic end in 1928 in Venice, where Louis discovered that Nancy had taken another lover. So distraught, he tried to kill himself. Poor Louis! Fortunately, he didn't succeed, but the incident did inspire one of his most famous poems, Il n'aura fallu, one of many of his works transformed into song, in this case by renowned singer Leo Ferré in the 1950s. Another stroke of luck, 
His newly single status meant that he was free when he met his true great love at the popular haunt of the era La Coupole. This was Elsa Triolet. The Russian writer and translator would become Louis' lifelong muse, and the two became one of the greatest literary couples in France in the 20th century. They got married in 1939, and much of his work was dedicated to their love. Elsa was an esteemed writer in her own right, and was the first woman to receive the prestigious literary award, the Prix Goncourt. In the meantime, in the 1930s, Louis became heavily involved in the French Communist Party. He was in this position when World War II broke out, and thus he naturally got involved in the French resistance, as did Elsa. A few years after the war, the couple bought an old mill southwest of Paris, where they spent the following decades. Upon Elsa's death in 1970, Aragon opened up about his bisexuality, albeit a bit of a late declaration as he was in his 70s. He died in 1982 and is buried next to Elsa at their residence, where the couple now lies in eternal peace together. Eternellement. In fact, a plaque in the micro square has the following excerpt from Louise's writing. Connaissez-vous l'île, au cœur de la ville, où tout est tranquille, éternellement? Do you know the island in the center of the city, where all is tranquil, eternally? If you're enjoying this episode of Romancing in Paris, you may also like to tune in to our sister podcast, The Terroir Podcast, which explores French gastronomy. Romancing in Paris will be right back after a word from our sponsors. And now, back to Romancing in Paris. <sighs> With love floating in the air... The little square is the perfect place for a romantic outing in the fourth. Contemplate Louise's poetry and your love for your chéri, or for Paris, on one of the square's shaded benches, from where you can gaze out at the wonderful views of the eastern tip of Ile de la Cité and the riverbanks of the right bank near Hotel de Ville. A nearby staircase takes you down to the river's edge, where there are further benches. This is the spot that beckons picnics, so you might want to do some picnic shopping in the boutiques that line the island's main street before you come here, or after acquiring a delicious ice cream at one of the stands of Bertillon, Paris's most famous ice cream maker. I hope the enchanting spot will foster love while you're there, or perhaps even your own love poem. After or before you visit it, you might want to pop across either side of the Seine to visit the Rue des Bars, the topic of episode 4, or the Quai de la Tournelle, discussed in episode 5. Thank you for listening to this latest episode of Romancing in Paris. If you enjoyed it, please rate or review the podcast. It only takes a minute, and it's extremely helpful. If you'd like to support the Paris Underground Radio Network, please see its Patreon page which offers a whole range of wonderful extras for its members. Until next time, happy romancing in Paris. This episode of Romancing in Paris was produced by Jennifer Garrity for Paris Underground Radio. For more on this show and shows like it, please visit parisundergroundradio.com.